This is uh, the demonstration, education and experimentation site of the Permaculture Institute of El Salvador. Two and a half years ago we bought this site which is approximately 20 acres. Um, it's a steeply sloping land and it's very typical of the kind of land that local farmers are farming in the sense that it's, um, it's not ideal land to farm. It's very stony, the soil is not particularly good um, and it's very steep. We deliberately bought a site like that to develop it as a demonstration of what permaculture can do under difficult conditions. So here we use this site first of all to demonstrate all of the different principles and practices of permaculture, both in terms of agriculture and other kinds of appropriate technologies and building techniques. It's also used as a, a meeting place, so the local network, ecological network, which is made up of a number of communities, have their meetings here and they help us develop the site. So the site is being developed with almost no resources, with the human resources that, um, that we have available, the leaders of the community and, and a few of our own staff from the Institute that are here permanently, and with the local resources, natural resources that we have to hand. So I'm going to show you a few of the practices um, that we demonstrate to, to community leaders and communities when they come to visit us. So as I mentioned, the site has been developed with almost no resources at all. Uh, we have an area of forest at the top of the land, in fact most of the site is forested. Um, that provides us with some natural materials for building, although we manage that quite carefully. So our buildings, as you can see, are really simple. Uh, this is our training room for the moment. Uh, which is just made up of uh, wood from our forest and tin sheet which is covered with palm leaves to keep it cool but it's a perfectly adequate training room and it costs us almost nothing. Here we have an, another little room that we use for group work on the training courses and discussions which again is made, costs us almost nothing, it's made with local materials. We develop the site according to the permaculture zones so we consider this as one of our zone ones. The other zone one is um, in our house where our staff and volunteers are accommodated, which we'll look at at some later point. But here we have available, and we've designed this area to have available the things that we need for the activities that are going on in this area. So as far as possible, with the limited resources we have, we're planting up, we have um, various vegetables here and, and scented flowers, which is nice for the training. Um, we have compost at various points on the site so that it's available in the areas that we need it. So we're making compost constantly. Um, we're making two kinds of um, organic fertiliser. This is traditional compost which takes a number of months to, to produce for it to be ready. But we also make the fermented um, <clears throat> fertiliser called bukachi, which can be made in 15 days and we make that in huge quantities. Um, so you can see here as well we have another compost heap and in that area in the distance you can see we have structures for um, semilleros for bringing on seeds and small plants. So here we can see two other techniques for soil conservation. Um, this one here is um, vertiver grass which is used as a live barrier, planted on the contour lines um, and prevents the soil from washing away again. Um, in front of it is the remains of a swale. Uh, again, it's a ditch which is uh, dug on the contour line and receives the water as it's rushing down the hill um, and allows the water to filter slowly through the land rather than rushing down at speed and causing more soil erosion. Uh, we, at various intervals, will empty out the swale because that has good soil in it and use that soil for compost or for planting vegetables in another area. I've talked about um, the two kinds of compost that we make for helping to build the fertility of the soil, but we also use green manures. And we plant, we've planted large extensions of green manure on our land to improve the quality of the land in general, as well as interplanting it in the areas where we grow our main crops. So this plant here is called Canavalia. Um, it's a green manure, which means that it fixes nitrogen around its roots and in that way improves the soil. The design principles that we teach on the design course 
is that for every element that we put into a design, in other words, everything that we plant or we place within the area that we're developing, should have as many functions as possible. So here we can see the vetiver grass, um, or sometimes it's lemongrass. And if it's lemongrass, it has three purposes, three functions. One is that it acts as um, flavouring for food. It also has medicinal properties, as vetiver grass does. Um, it acts as a live barrier for preventing soil erosion. And when we regularly cut it, it we also use the cut grass as mulch. It's important in, in permaculture never to leave the soil bare to protect it from the rays of the sun. Um, and mulch helps us keep down the weeds and prevents us having to work so hard when in we weeds. start teaching people permaculture, the first thing that we hope that they will change is to stop burning the land. Traditionally, people here, when they're preparing for planting, they set fire to the, to the area that they're going to plant so that they can end up with completely bare soil. Um, what we teach people is, by doing that, you're burning fertility, you're destroying fertility, not just in, in the vegetation that you're burning, but the burning process actually destroys the life in the soil. So here you can see an alternative, which is hard work, but it's using the machete to, to weed and to clear away the vegetation, but leaving it on the land, leaving it both to, as cover to protect the soil, but also helps provide fertility for the soil. Small farmers in El Salvador, their main crop is maize. And the tradition here is to just plant maize, or perhaps just maize and beans. What we're teaching people is to diversify what they're producing. To diversify it both to improve the family diet, but also to create a productive ecosystem. So on our permaculture design course, we teach people about how eco natural ecosystems work and how na nature is uh, an in incredibly complex uh, interrelationship of different plants and animals and the life in the soil. So this is our demonstration milpa, our corn plot. But it's something very unusual in El Salvador in that we're planting a huge number of, of other productive food plants here as well. So that a family not only diversifies its diet, but if one plant fails because of the clim climate conditions, there's always something else that will survive and that they can have to eat. So in this milpa, you can see corn, which is the principal crop. But in amongst the corn, we have planted um, Jamaica rose, which is very high in vitamin C, the flower, uh, and it's used to make drinks. It's also very good for the kidneys. We've planted pumpkins and different kinds of squash. We have red beans, uh, runner beans, green beans. Um, further up you can see that we have rice. We've also designed and planted a system for uh, prevention of pests. So there are two stages in pest control and the, f the first one and the most important is to prevent the pests taking over the crop. So you'll find planted here a number of um, aromatic plants which help with um, to repel the pests. We've also planted plants which we call sacrificial plants which are ones that we expect the insects to eat uh, because they too have a right to eat um, in, so that they don't eat our main crop which is uh, the, the maize and the other vegetables that we've planted. Sombra de árbol para tu cabeza, libro abierto a tu vida, mi puerta, casa abierta. La amistad no cuestiona tu credo, a la tierra le gusta que amemos, sin distingos de culto y bandera. Casa abierta, hay un plato por ti en nuestra mesa, Sombra de árbol para tu cabeza, libro abierto a tu vida, mi puerta. Casa abierta, la amistad no cuestiona tu credo, a la tierra le gusta que amemos, sin distingos de culto y paz.